Hey everybody, James and Tammy, Q&A session. Adrian Ramirez says, is it too late to start in the Frenchy world, breeding side, or is it, or is Fluffy's an opportunity, quality to start, or any advice to start? Let's see, we've got a reply, let's see what this place says. G91 says, it's never too late to start anything as long as you're willing to invest in it yourself. There you go, good answer. So, you know, um, no, I think it's fine. I, it, but, but the advice that G91 said is exactly right. You know, be passionate about it. If you're passionate about it, you'll do good, you'll enjoy doing it, and you'll do well. So no, do it. Uh, I have, let's see, who's this from? This is from Kim Nero, it says, thank you for sharing your knowledge, blah, blah, blah. I have a question. My new puppy, female, sable, the uh, girl, has easty, westy eyes. Uh, can it be corrected over time? Do you think it's good to breed her in the future? So a young puppy absolutely can grow out of this. So, I mean, easty, westy, probably gonna have some easty, westy. Girl. When we say easty, westy, we mean a dog that's looking out like this. So the left and the right eye look in slightly different directions. Um, and, um, but young puppies with a skull's not got big enough yet. Right, Tammy, agree with yeah. some of that? You'll, you can see some easty well, westerners that can go I, away. Mm, Especially. Hmm? I'm going to disagree. I, okay, well, I was gonna say this. You can have a dog that has a very small head, maybe because it was a runt and it can have eyes that seem like they are more on the sides and those things can get corrected. But generally, you'd rather not have easty westy eyes. Would you agree with that? Do a lot of chew toys, something to chew on, something to grab its attention to its eyes. Oh, so they look forward? Yeah. There you go, that's some good advice. All right. But that's, that's it, good luck. That's nice. I've got this thing here. Someone's asking, uh, uh, can you ship your incubators to the UK? Absolutely. We can ship our incubators all over the all over the globe. So we've got two 40 volt versions. Actually, they they um, um, they run off 12 volts. So they come with a 12 volt adapter that runs off 120 or 240. We give you the right adapter to plug into a 240 volt outlet, or the different ones if you're in Australia or wherever. So you get the right adapter. And of course, if you plug it into a car cigarette lighter, it's already 12 volts anyway. So the answer is yes. And somebody had a reply here and they said, get one, they're great. That was nice, thank you. Can you please tell us what brand and where you get your vaccines from? I mean, we get them from the vet sometimes, and then sometimes we order them on the revival. That's what and you said in your yeah. video for last I think night. Duramax, I think Duramax, but I'm not sure about that. I mean, there's all different versions of this. There's five in ones, seven in ones, ones that have Parvo, ones that have Distemper. If you're not sure, then I'd say talk to your vet. I just got my DNA test back, but having trouble trying to figure out what it what it means. This is David Garcia. We'll just post it here, and we'll we'll, we'll pull it up and tell you yeah, what everybody what it means. Tell, tell tell people where they can find out what it means. Well, if you typically when you order a genetics test, they give you a little legend that tells you what the various things are, but it can be hard to understand what it means if you've never done it before. Uh, Doggy Mom says, I have a five-year-old palm and I got a female palm who's nine months old on her first heat. The other day they had an unwanted mate mated about 15 days into the heat. Will my female get pregnant, please? Uh, also, uh, so they were so happy afterwards. When is it safe for them to mate but not get mate but not to get pregnant? I'm not sure what that means. What's that mean, Daddy? Did, they, did he have a cigarette afterwards? Was yeah, he I happy? Don't know what that means. I mean, what are you going to do? Tell the dog to pull out at the right moment, do the rhythm method? It's a Catholic dog? Or are you going to put a prophylactic on the dog? I don't know what that means. Let's just approach the first part. A nine month old puppy, you hope he doesn't get pregnant. Yeah. Um, what can you do about it? There are some things no you kidding. There are some things you can do. You can immediately flush the dog out. I've got a video on this. She's too young to have puppies. She's small anyway. Yeah, so She's too young to have puppies. Unwanted How much pregnancy. does she weigh? You know, she may be too little. So an unwanted pregnancy, I'd recommend that you immediately take a turkey baster and some 10% oh vinegar gosh. and water and flush the dog out. That might stop it. There is a shot you can mm. give 
that uh, will stop a dog that's got bred from, from go, having, getting pregnant. That you can go to your vet for. How do they seem they, so happy afterwards? You can, you can uh, stop it. You can, um, um, <laughs> steroid shots will make a dog and vaccines oh will, will, but I don't advise those as either ways to handle this. You've got to watch your pets. You've got to watch your dogs. Don't just let them go and go breed. It, it, you know, it's you're not being responsible. I'm sorry. You've got well, to be responsible okay. for your dogs. Okay, but they let's, need let's to not give dog, let's not give doggy mum too well, hard time. I know, but this is, you've this got is, to be responsible. Okay, but this is about yes. telling other people what they can do in the future. So that's what this is. Really? is you learn from your mistakes. It's hard for me to keep my mouth closed. On so. That. Um, yeah, there's ways that you can do this. Look, here, the problem you've got now is if she is pregnant, she's a small dog, you may want to have a C-section because you may run into trouble. So if she is pregnant, get a pregnancy test done and then get an x-ray done before she wells and decide whether it's even reasonable for her to have these puppies or whether you've got to interview with a C-section because you really can get a dog in trouble. We had a Chihuahua one time that had seven puppies and you know normally they do well she naturally, but she, she about died over and she had to have a C-section. So. Um, because she's a very small dog. She's a very small dog. Um, so yeah, I would go. I would go to your vet, but you need to get this done fairly quickly. The window of opportunity to stop a pregnancy is is measured in a few days. Well, she may not ever have puppies again. I just picked right? up my fluffy carrier pup, and her coat is so much silky than my others. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's wonderful. So, I love the feel of their coats. Just they do vary. Silk. They do vary. Yeah. So people ask, is that difference between L1 and L4? No. It's just there's some other gene going on in there that affects look, coat coarseness and length. And so you will see some variation in fluffies. Well, where, in, the, in our litter that we had, there yeah. was some that were the same exact. L1, l four. Yeah. And one was fuller and thicker, and or it was just as soft as silk, and the other one was shorter hair. Look at but in that litter, Draco. They all, yeah, he had the had shorter a, hair. He had a shorter hair, but a fluffy. really thick though, wasn't oh, it? Oh really gosh, thick, it took pretty, forever to, for his hair to dry because it's so thick. Really thick versus uh, Albus, who has a really like a lamb's coat, wavy, long-haired coat. Very different coats. Yeah. How often do you put peanut butter on the puppy's butts? We're talking about introducing mum to her new babies and to get them to be accepted by mum so that she will lick and stimulate them and realize the hers. Of times. Yeah, just as many times it takes. Yeah. If she starts to stimulate them without the peanut butter, what you're gonna find is this. You put the peanut, you, the first thing you do is you take your brand new puppy, you put it up in butt and mum's face, carefully, mm -hmm. with your hands around it, and mum either starts licking on it, man, world's good, or she's like, no, nah, that's not my job, yeah. you do that. Looks at you like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. So that's when you put some peanut butter on there, and they always will lick the peanut butter off. And then the puppy starts to relieve itself, and then they get a mix of uh, peanut butter and other butter, and uh, and they can well, over- then she realizes that this is my job. Yes, right, so it may- Or you hope she realizes that's her job. So then you offer the next puppy with that peanut butter on. And if she doesn't, want to lick on that one put peanut butter on that one and so so you go on until she gets the point in this feeding or the next feeding or the feeding after that where she realizes that they're her babies and she wants to lick their butts can you get a false pregnancy on cocoa from animal genetics you can get a false pregnancy you can get a false genetic test on any of these places on any color you want to come up with so absolutely if you don't know your DNA on your dogs and you get your coat color test back on your puppies you're not gonna know but if you know what your DNA is on your dog you have a pretty good idea what your puppies are gonna be yeah but so yeah and that's when you yeah I mean the answer to this is that they're normally pretty reliable but if you get a test back that you don't believe in because you know the parents or because the way the dogs look or for back. instance if it's a cocoa dog that has a red eye glow they'll and they say it's not cocoa, they'll run the test again. Yeah, they and, will. And here's another thing that you can get wrong. You can get, you can do the test wrong yourself. For instance, oh, yeah. if you've got a puppy that's still nursing and you use a swab, that will really mess it up. Right. So a nursing pups, you need to do a blood sample or you need to do dew claws. You can't do a, a, a mouth swab on a puppy that's probably less than five no. or six weeks old. If you pinprick a puppy's well, paw and you use the same pin, pin Oh, between yeah. the various different puppies that can get you a false result too so either use a different pin or get some alcohol and wipe it off really thoroughly before you use it on the next puppy yeah. it's contaminated yeah. 
Uh, G91, hi James, just had my pups two days ago and vet said don't keep my pups with mum, just let them feed every two hours. But I'm pretty sure I watched a video where you said leave the pups with mum as long as she's good. Am I cr correcting saying that? Uh, what would you do? There's a reply here, let's see what the reply says. Oh, well I guess I reply to this. Because here's the answer. We use our patented well-put heat system which you can get at mybreedersupply.com. Specifically set up so the mums and babies are together for the first uh, uh, seven, well, I don't want to sit here, for the first 24 7, i.e., all the time, for the next three weeks of their life. And the reason this works so well is, and I think this is the last part of this video, so the reason this works so well is because the way this works is we build you a heat tape that goes on the bottom of your crate. This can be a crate that you've built, it could be one that you've bought from like a Dura World, it could be a crate that you bought from Amazon, it doesn't matter, it can even be round. Whatever it is, we can build the corresponding tape that goes on the bottom, it's a pressure sensitive heat tape, that just goes on the periphery underneath your cage. So the heat comes up just in the edges of the crate, at the perimeter on the inside. And then you can build or we can supply you with adapters so you can put a pig rail around that perimeter above where the heat is. Guess what? Puppies are want the heat. They naturally find that area under the pig rail. They fall asleep under the pig rail. They're there 95% of the time. They can't get squished by mum. They can't get cold. It's absolutely amazing to see, see them all underneath that pig rail. All lined up. Yeah. And when and when they want they're hungry, they go find mum. They will move away from there, they'll find mum. Mum's in the middle of the crate where it's not warm at all, no extra heat. She loves it nice in there. And comfy. She, she wants to be with her babies and then like you mums out there. I mean human mums What happened if you didn't have your baby? Anxiety, right? Don't think that any all mammals they all operate the same way whether they're pigs horses cats dogs humans Mums are evolutionary built to look after and be with their babies and they want to be with that and if you separate them then you can have problems with accepting their babies, and you can have problems with anxiety, and you can have all, I mean, another well, thing that can happen. the other thing is the mama could reject them. Yes, you can get re up. Well, here's another yeah, thing that can happen. She's gonna think, uh, you're taking care of them. You, you separate your babies. You put them in an incubator or whatever. So you take babies to mom every two or three hours. They haven't been fed in two or three hours. Their thirst is all get out. They start going wild. Next thing you know, they've got milk running down their noses. Yeah. Because they're getting, they're, they're so, worried hungry. about you know they're so yeah. hungry and then next you know you get inhalation of milk so now you've got it you've got a puppy that develops pneumonia and dies because of this yeah. i mean it doesn't happen all the time but it absolutely can happen it does happen yeah stop yeah. taking your babies away from mums go invest in our heated whelping system get your life back make your mums happy and your baby's safe you're rested ready to face the day of yeah, babies. I mean, people who say, oh, I only let them nurse when I'm there. It's like, you know, you can't look after this all the time. There's just no way. I mean, you're just going to ruin your life. And, you, and at the same time, you haven't achieved anything that's worthwhile. Mum's not thanking you for it. She wants to be with her babies. Don't separate your babies. Go get a heated welcome system. I know this is an unabashed plug for our product, but it absolutely works. I mean, this is something that I've discovered about six, seven years ago and developed this product. And I've got thousands of people now who are using it. And it just works works it just works and when you see it you'll realize there is not a better way to do it and unfortunately the vet that you're visiting doesn't know about this and doesn't realize how well this works as well anyway just wasted 14 minutes of everybody's time i know it so uh from tammy and james we say thanks for watching bye bye mm -hmm.